여러분 안녕하세요. 대한민국 영어 감잡기 프로젝트 대미안과 함께하는 러시 영북 시간입니다. 이번 시간은 27강 리딩입니다. 여기 82쪽 마지막 문장부터예요. 자, 읽어볼까요? With nausea and outrage, I could still hear my life, drunk and unruly, spluttering out of me in idiotic laughter, in jerks and fits. There I was. In spite of everything, I almost reveled in my agonies. I had been blind and insensible, and my heart had been silent for so long, had cowered impoverished in a corner, that even this self-accusation, this dread, All these horrible feelings were welcome. At least it was feeling of some kind. At least there were some flames. The heart at least flickered. Confusedly, I felt something like liberation amid my misery. Meanwhile, viewed from the outside, I was going rapidly down here. My first drunken frenzy was soon followed by others. There was much going to bars and carousing in our school. I was one of the youngest to take part, yet soon enough I was not merely a fledgling from one grudgingly took along. I had become the ringleader and star, a notorious and daring bar crawler. Once again, I belonged entirely to the world of darkness and to the devil. And in this world, I had the reputation of being one hell of a fellow. Nonetheless, I felt wretched. I lived in an orgy of self-destruction, and while my friends regarded me as a leader and as a damned sharp and funny fellow, deep down inside me, my soul grieved. I can still remember tears springing to my eyes when I saw children playing in the street on Sunday morning as I emerged from a bar, children with freshly combed hair and dressed in their Sunday best. Those friends who sat with me in the lowest dives among beer puddles and dirty tables, I amused with the remarks of unprecedented cynicism, often even shocked them. Yet in my inmost heart, I was in awe of everything I belittled, and lay weeping before my soul, my past, my mother, before God. There was good reason why I never became one with my companions, why I felt alone among them, and was therefore able to suffer so much. I was a barroom hero and a cynic, to satisfy the taste of the most brutal, I displayed wit and courage in my ideas and remarks about teachers, school, parents, and church. I could also bear to hear the filthiest stories and even ventured an occasional one myself, but I never accompanied my friends when they visited women. I was alone and was filled with intense longing for love a hopeless longing, while to judge by my talk, I should have been a hard-boiled sensualist. No one was more easily hurt, no one more bashful than I. And when I happened to see the young, well-brought-up girls of the town walking in front of me, pretty and clean, innocent and graceful, they seemed like wonderful, pure dreams, a thousand times too good for me. For a time, I could not even bring myself to enter Mrs. Yagert's stationery store because I blushed looking at her, remembering what Alphonse Beck had told me. The more I realized that I was to remain perpetually lonely and different within my new group of friends, the less I was able to break away. I really don't know any longer whether boozing and swaggering actually ever gave me any pleasure. Moreover, I never became so used to drinking that I did not always feel embarrassing after effects. It was all as if I were somehow under a compulsion to do these things. I simply did what I had to do because I had no idea what to do with myself otherwise. I was afraid of being alone for long, was afraid of the many tender and chaste moods that would overcome me, 
was afraid of the thoughts of love surging up in me. What I missed above all else was a friend. There were two or three fellow students whom I could have cared for, but they were in good standing and my vices had long been an open secret. They avoided me. I was regarded by and large as a hopeless rebel whose ground was slipping from under his feet. The teachers were well informed about me. I had been severely punished several times. My final expulsion seemed merely a matter of time. I realized myself that I had become a poor student, but I wriggled strenuously through one exam after the other, always feeling that it couldn't go on like this much longer. There are numerous ways in which God can make us lonely and lead us back to ourselves. This was the way he dealt with me at that time. It was like a bad dream. I can see myself crawling along in my odious and unclean way, across filth and slime, across broken beer glasses, and through cynically wasted nights, a spellbound dreamer, restless and wrecked. There are dreams in which, on your way to the princess, you become stuck in quagmires, in bad alleys full of foul odors and refuse. That was how it was with me. In this unpleasant fashion, I was condemned to become lonely, and I raised between myself and my childhood a locked gateway to Eden with its pitilessly resplendent host of guardians. It was a beginning, a awakening of nostalgia for my former self. Yet I had not become so callous as not to be startled into twinges of fear, and my father, alarmed by my tutor's letters, appeared for the first time in St. Deng Deng and confronted me unexpectedly. 자, 오늘은 여기까지 하겠습니다. 여러분 오늘의 영상이 여러분이 영어에 감을 잡는 데 도움이 된다면 구독, 좋아요로 꼭 알려주세요. 더 좋은 영상을 만드는 데큰 힘이 될 것입니다. 여러분 감사합니다.